Long story short, it was the wrong guy. Hey yeah, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is actually the second video I have recorded this week. I hopefully will have uploaded my other one by the time that I have finished videoing this, which is the 21st of December. I'm aiming to upload on Monday and Friday. As you can see from the title, I am obsessed with Taylor Swift's new album. Now, I'm not in any way a Swifty. I grew up listening to her music when I was like really young and loved her Fearless album, her Taylor Swift album. And my love for her kind of stopped at Red. I just did not like the album that much. Some of the songs are okay. I quite like Red itself. I didn't like Reputation at all, really. It just, it's not, it's, I don't know. It wasn't, it was a big difference between her old music and that music so it kind of shocked me and I didn't really like it but I do like her new two albums so I really loved Folklore and I absolutely love Evermore, Evermore even more than I love Folklore and I've already did a live session on her Folklore album for my radio show and so I figured I can't really do Evermore again, I can't do Taylor Swift again because I've already done Taylor Swift, I did James Blunt and I did Melanie Martinez so why not do it on here instead? But I'm not going to be over analysing song lyrics today, I figured I've seen on YouTube a lot of people do the trend where they like rate things and they put it, it's like James Charles did it for example where he rated his past scandals and he did like the board. I'm going to try and use my technical skills to do that. Now whether that actually happens or not and whether it's a makeshift board or not will be another question we will try. I've written a list of all of the songs that she has gotten on her Evermore album and I have written them from 1 to 15 and then I'll be going on about a bit about what my view on the actual whole album is and sort of the fan theory behind it because I love some theories because there is one thing that Taylor's good at is linking things together as she did in Folklore where she linked the sort of love triangle with Betty, James and Inez. In this album she does the same thing and there are links to those characters as well and which I think is very clever and new. I haven't seen that in any other artist. Artist. tell me if I'm wrong but she creates this story that I don't see in any other artist. I'm going to try and stop saying um this <laughs> this video because I have to edit them all out so so I'm going to be going from her lowest to her highest in my rating. I love all of them actually I don't have a song but well, there is one song on here that I don't like which is at the bottom and I'll go through that first uh, but other than that I actually really love all of the songs on her album there are just reasons that I will go through Lyrically, mainly lyrically, because I'm obsessed with lyrics more than actual music. The beat can be kind of a standard beat. It doesn't really matter to my brain. If the lyrics are sort of symbolic or create a picture or tell a story or something like that, I really love that in music. So that is where I've come through from with this rating. First off, I had at number 15, Coney Island, Feet the National. I didn't personally like this song. I, it's one of those ones that I just skip, so I don't really know much about the song. I haven't listened, I actually haven't listened to the whole, to, to it the whole way through because I just get bored halfway through. Uh, that's just my opinion. I don't really, I, it's linked in ways to Gatsby, which she uses Gatsby a lot in both of these albums. It's used in her song Happiness, which I'll talk about later, which Gatsby, as an English sort of a half English student, that is sort of a nice reference to have, but it's quite a standard reference and it's not really anything new. A lot of people use Gatsby, Romeo and Juliet, that sort of vibe to within their music, within their poetry, because it's like the, the fairy tale love story, it's not anything new. And Taylor's kind of known for her love songs and her breakup songs. Now she has sort of strayed away from that and gone to a more mystical place. Um, she writes songs that tell stories rather than just we're never getting back together which is just quite a catchy song. It's not necessarily telling a story. Love Story did tell a story so it's something that she's done throughout her career but it's a lot more prominent now than it was if that makes sense. Um, bef before I go on I have to say this is all my opinion and anybody watching who likes Taylor Swift and is more knowledgeable on her than me then let me know but this is all my opinion and what I've taken from it and I think that's what's important in music is to take what you want from music, take what resonates with you and run with it and that's really what I've done. So the next one I've got and I do like this song, I like the music, the melody 
um, is Gold Rush. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't relate to the song as much as I did to other songs, I guess. Although that's a bit of a scary thing to say when the f one who's at, at, that's at the top I can't really relate to, but I just like the music. Anyway, Gold Rush, there is some references to Harry Styles that have been sort of theorised. I'm hesitant to believe in them, but that is because I I don't know if it, I'm, I'm in neither fandom so I don't know too much on the theory I was reading up on it and it basically is that Harry wrote a song called Golden and people have linked the two songs but there were also links between Gold Rush and Taylor's friendship with Carly Kloss because some people think that they had a relationship like a romantic relationship either way they had a friendship and they had a photo shoot where both of them were pictured with gold tattoos gold flash tattoos people have linked those two because it would make sense with the sort of Harry Styles theory a lot of people like to link it to his song Golden because there are lyrics that are quite similar in both but I don't know I, I as I say I'm not part of, of either fandom I haven't looked into the theory too much take from that as you will there was also some sort of theory to do with her other songs or other ones that I'll talk about later that link to Harry Styles my next one is Closure again it's one of my skip songs I like the song in what it says it's got a good message about I know the end of a relationship that sort of thing but I just I can't really remember the song personally I don't I it's not one that would sort of stick with me if that makes sense and I have nothing else to say about that song so that really tells you. This is where I get into songs that I do like, but I wouldn't choose to listen to, so I wouldn't necessarily skip it straight away. So C Coney Island, I skip almost immediately. These ones I'll skip maybe halfway through because I get bored of songs anyway. Marjorie, uh, which I have linked as number 12, I've linked it with Dorothea and Nobody No Crime. There are some theories on this and I'll actually talk about this a bit more later because it links with other songs that I've got higher up the list. It's all to do with a murder mystery and I that is my personal favourite theory. Um, as a criminology student that's my personal favourite theory but as I say I'll go on about that a bit later. The reason I put this one quite low down is because it's a lovely song, it can just get quite boring and repetitive as it goes on in my opinion obviously people can have their own views on that it's very folklore evermore-esque it's dreamy and like it's like you're in a field and you're like surrounded by flowers like that that sort of song so marjorie is actually about um the, the name is is taylor's grandmother great grandmother somebody who's related to taylor in that sense and i as i say we'll talk about later a bit more about a secondary theory that i think links to that that she hasn't talked about but she specifically said that she sh the name marjorie is her grandmother great grandmother and it's kind of a, a nice peaceful song um what died didn't stay dead is one of the lyrics so it's ominous but also peaceful song that doesn't make sense how do i how do i explain that there are two different sides to the song you can take from it as you want to take from it it's it's peaceful in melody, but some of the lyrics are quite complicated and quite dark, if you really think about it, because what dies doesn't stay dead is kind of like apocalyptic. But I think what she means more is that things aren't gone forever, which is a nice sort of idea. It's not as ominous as my other sort of notion would go with. Next, I put Tolerate It. Um, again, not one that I really remember. It's one that I do skip halfway. Through. For me, the song kind of just drags. Like, it's the same all the way through. There are some really lovely lyrics, but it's not anything new and it kind of drags, as I say. I don't know another word for it. It's just slow. I think it's her fifth, the fifth song on the album and she's known for having her fifth song as a more slow, thoughtful, I guess, beautiful song. And it is, it is a lovely song, it's just I think it dragged. The idea of the song is very depressing, let's say. It's to do with like to tolerating a relationship and tolerating uh, the bad parts in life. And a lot of this album is about heartbreak and about this dark marriage trilogy, which is to do with a marriage that's breaking down and committing adultery behind some the, the woman's back, which we'll see it later in Estee. Um, it's just like a dark image. And for me, it, it drags. I think it could have been more, it could have been sped up a bit, but I can understand why she's done that because as her fifth song on her album, and as I say, it's, it's, it's a nice song. It's just dull for me. Moving on to number 10, Cowboy Like Me. I really wanted to love this song because I am so glad that Taylor has gone back to her country route because she abandoned the country for quite a long time with Reputation, Red, that sort of thing was very more, was much more pop and that's what I was kind of disappointed by when she lost that because I, I liked her pop, her country pop music especially with like Mean from her Fearless, was that from Fearless or Taylor Swift? I can't remember 
one of her first albums, Jump Them Fall, that sort of song. It was very sort of acoustic guitar, uh, ukulele, that sort of feel. And I really wanted to like this because as I say, it kind of emphasizes her going back to her roots. But I just, I don't know, I just didn't. The lyrics are beautiful, as is all of the lyrics in her. She's a very good lyricist. I just, again, think it's very slow and could have been sped up to a more like happy, feel but again that wouldn't really go with her album so I don't I don't know I just don't I, don't, I, I personally didn't I get bored with the song it's very it's very slow it's the classic tune of a kind of like a country song and it's very a classic tune of her evermore folk folklore album albums I don't know I, I'm not going to try and give Taylor Swift writing advice because she's obviously a much better lyricist and songwriter than me but at number nine I've put happiness and this is where I start to really like the songs but I've just had to rank them in a certain order this one is still slow but it builds as it goes on so it gets faster and louder and sort of it's it's almost like this aura is lifted and that's very folklore-esque anyway it's like sunshine is like filling the room if that makes sense maybe I'm an English student I'm taking English analogies but the tone lifts it feels happy even though it's still in a way mourning the loss of something. It's like, I was happy because of you. It's it's a nice message. The lyrics are always beautiful, of course, but I just like the uplifting feel. I think that's where I start to break into songs that I actually like from this album. Next at number eight, I have put Long Story Short. I adore the lyrics for this song. It tells such a great story. It's almost like an Alice, of Lo uh, Alice in Wonderland story. It's got lyrics such as right down the rabbit hole, which is a clear Alice in Wonderland reference. And I also love lines such as I tried to pick my battles till the battle picked me because it's almost like commenting on how she has gone through life and she has had all this drama surrounding her, whether right or wrong, but I'm not going to comment. She's commenting on how she has picked all her little battles and it's now come back and attacked her rightly or wrongly i also really i know i don't talk i love the lyrics more than the actual melody but i love the melody of this song i like the long story short it was the wrong guy it's like that you know that the little bit at the end i don't know what it's called musical musicians tell me where it's like a repeated note time sort of thing i really love that because it's catchy, it's upbeat, it's more upbeat, it's a much faster song, it keeps me engaged with the song, and as it keeps going, it, it goes through the other, all of the same sort of imagery. When I dropped my, my sword, I threw it in the bushes and knocked on your door. It kind of reminds me of Long Live, um, if anybody knows that song. I absolutely adore Long Live, that's one of my favourite Taylor Swift songs ever, because it's to do with usurpers and, and kings and queens and history and just all these things that she never experienced and she's just kind of put into a song, which I think is amazing and, and is what songwriters are there to do. I forgot to talk about happiness a little bit. In happiness, there are many Gatsby references. So that's a link to, as I say before, Coney Island. She talks about the green light, which is the it's a green light of forgiveness or something like that green light of something like that mercy i don't know um that she talks about in her lyrics which could be a link to and is probably a link to the green light the end of daisy's dock that gatsby looks out to and that's a symbol in gatsby of her yearning of love of all those sorts of things uh the past because he wants to go back to the past and that also links to all of taylor's sort of songs because she's talking about a, a lost past and hope for the future and hope to rekindle something that's gone so it, it links together it's a very clever um analogy she also says i hope she'll be your beautiful fool which is a very clear reference to what daisy says about her daughter and she says i hope one day she'll be a beautiful fool because that's the best thing a girl can be in the world and that's a comment on misogyny which taylor's big on uh, feminism and that would make sense as as a symbol of female power and how things haven't really changed as much as people would hope that they had changed and people try to explain that they've changed it's quite a sad image of women but i think that's very powerful and i think that's what taylor is supposed to, is is supposedly trying to do next at number seven i put willow willow is almost a, a like was the first sort of song that was that came out as, as a promo of evermore and i was a bit confused by the video i know there were a lot of what they call easter eggs in it so it was it was all symbols of taylor and i wouldn't know because again i'm not part of the fan and i'm not going to spend hours researching it all but apparently it linked on from one of her songs from her other album i can't remember which one it was 
and I guess if you're looking into it, then maybe there's a huge big link that I've missed. It's a spider web of, of analysis. It's a very beautiful song. I just don't think it's what everyone has hyped it up to be, personally. I think I put it in number seven because again, it's a beautiful song. It's got beautiful lyrics. It's got a beautiful message. It's got many, many symbols in it, which I'm not gonna go through because this isn't a song analysis or it's sort of turned into a song analysis thing, but it's not a song analysis YouTube video. People have said it's her best song she's done yet. And I personally don't see that in my opinion. I think this is one is the best album she's done yet because collectively all the songs are very good. All of them are very good. But I wouldn't say any of the songs on this album are the best songs she's ever done. If you, got, if you take Invisible String, which is in, insane, a very good song, and This Is Me Trying, or Mad Woman, or I think I think Folklore was revolutionary in her song in songwriting, and I don't understand how Willow has kind of become this best song she's ever written, because I think it, it isn't, but it's still a very beautiful song. It's just, it's, it's hyped up to be a lot more than I personally would give it credit for. Also, Champagne Problems. I put that at number six because I really like the song, but again, I, I skip sort of three quarters of the way through as I do all of them up until number four. I like the imagery and I like the symbolism and I love the lyrics. There's not really much to say about it, honestly. It's just a really beautiful song and that's why I put it at number six rather than anywhere higher. It's, it is just a beautiful song. It's not anything sort of new or exciting for me. Next I have put Ivy which is another one that has been linked to the Dark Marriage trilogy. Ivy talks about the breakdown of relationships. Um, again it's quite slow but I quite like how slow it is in this. I'm contradicting myself but this song I think it needed to be slow to work. There are lyrics such as um, how's one to know I'd meet you where the spirit meets the bones. So obviously a, a discussion of death um, or loss possibly because it could be a non-physical death. If it is linked to the Lovers trilogy that was in Folklore, it would make sense because we have James, is it James that dies? Yeah, James dies in war, in war and it would link to that. If Betty, if Betty is talking, then if Betty's the narrator, then that would make sense. Obviously she has create, created this web of a story and I think that's incredible, but not the everyday listener would understand that unless you read into it a bit more. It's a very beautiful story to have, but it can be quite complicated at times. I love complicated, so that's fine for me, but for other people I can understand that probably isn't the first thing you pick up with on this song. It's just a beautiful song and I think it's more than just a beautiful song than um, as I spoke about with Champagne Problems. The reason I put this one above it is because it's just got some really clever lyrics. So it says, cover blooms in the field, spring breaks, lose the time is near. And that goes with the sort of murdered story that I'm gonna talk about later, because if it is the correct theory, because it's just a theory, but it also is very folklore, it's very evermore. It's the same, that sort of era, because it's the idea of sitting in a field, sort of cottage core, as um, people might put it, very country, very organic. And it kind of links to her whole image at the moment of natural, of finding herself, being free. I don't even know if I'm making any sense right now. This is just something that I love to talk about and I'm probably talking a load of rubbish. It's just my opinion. At number four, I've put Tis the Damn Season. People were a bit confused about this because maybe it's a Christmas song. Maybe it's to do with the season of Christmas and winter, but actually, it is more of a reference to the season of folklore and evermore. It's like a new season for Taylor, a new era. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful song and I don't skip this one. I really love this song. I think it's talking about the loss of a relationship in a very clever way and it's a, a very emotional song, but it's also very powerful. It's not just sort of a sad, soppy song that a lot of writers do understandably because it can be quite difficult to write a quite powerful sad song that's not just sad you're sitting there in your room crying to a song if you know what i mean this is a, a song that you can listen to when you're contemplating when you're happy even it's just it's just a beautiful song a lot of people have linked this song to the betty james inez trilogy because if it is betty speaking it's talking about you know wanting to know where her boyfriend is behind her back and we find out in the first one that he is, has cheated on her. It, it probably does link, is all I can say with that. And I've also linked that with the next one which is Dorothea, as they all three of them are in the Dark Marriage trilogy, which is the whole, the whole idea of Betty, James, Inez, all of that. Um, 
but also in this new album it's to do with what I'll talk about later with <laughs> what I'll talk about later as I've said already with the kind of murder mystery theme theory that kind of does link with it and I personally like to believe. As I say next is Dorothea which is a lovely song about childhood, about innocence, about not really about childhood but just innocence in general. This song has been linked to several different theories, one of them being uh, Selena Gomez which I don't really know the whole story, I, I thought that they were still very good friends but a lot of people have seemed to link Selena with this song as somebody who isn't as connected to Taylor anymore. I don't really know too much on it because in the lyrics it says do you, ever, do you ever think of me anymore. A lot of people have linked it to Selena and possibly a loss of friendship. As I've spoken about before it could also be linked to this new this whole murder mystery dynamic that could be added to it. Taylor's never spoken about it but she said that she does like true crime so it would make sense and as a criminology student I like to I like true crime too so we'll link it to that in some way shape or form anyway this is a very playful song upbeat but also well it's slow but it's got this nice melody to it it's like flowy melody uh, that's not technical terms but and we'll go with that. Uh, but it's a very sad song also, it's about the loss, as I say, the loss of friendship, the loss of relationship, the loss of innocence, the loss of childhood, the loss of everything, and it's put into quite a playful tone. I take from it is, it's, it kind of contradicts each other, the lyrics contradict the actual melody, but you could also say that because it's slow it does have this melancholy feel to it anyway. Now these are the top two, so I'm going to tell you the top two because I haven't got much to say about the first one, and then talk a bit about my favourite one off the album because it's my absolute favourite. Number two I've put Evermore, the name of the album, <laughs> is the song with the name of the album. At number one I have put Nobody No Crime, which I, oh god, I'm living for that song. I've played that song so many times since the album's come out, I absolutely love that song. Evermore is, is as I say, the name of the album. So it's a very important song in that sense. It's a very beautiful song, it's got lovely lyrics. The only reason it isn't at number one is because of my true crime love and also the fan theory that we've been bigging up the whole time. I personally like to believe that this fan theory is true because Taylor herself has said she is a true crime fan, as am I, and she wrote this extreme murder mystery which everybody's been left trying to solve as to who the ca these characters are. I like to believe that in some way, shape or form, it is linked to the disappearance of Marjorie West. Marjorie West was a four year old girl who went missing, was never found, the case was never solved, and it was one of the biggest mysteries, child mysteries ever. But what links for me this that to this song is one, the name Marjorie, which she said is her great grandmother, but also could link to other things too, because different things link together, that's just how, it, how life works. So Marjorie, there's a song called Marjorie, there is a song called Dorothea, and Dorothea is the big sister of Marjorie. So it seems like a very big coincidence that she's got two songs of the two sisters, one of them who went, who went missing. Este, who is mentioned in Nobody No Crime, is actually the name of one of the Haim sisters who did Nobody No Crime with her. She was chosen because apparently Taylor said that she, th she thought she would love to be in, in a murder mystery. So she chose that and then sent them the lyrics and the song and asked them to sing on it with, with her or do it with her. This song has been on repeat for me. I absolutely adore because it's very different, it's a murder mystery, I've not seen, not heard a song that's a, a murder mystery before, it's, it's a whole story. But also, it goes from, I think he did it, but I just can't prove it, to I think she did it, but I just can't prove it, to she thinks I did it. So it's like this whole dilemma of, of who did it. Um, and in the end we kind of have the idea that whoever is speaking did it, but has hidden it because she says, good thing um, I got a boating license at 13, and know how to houses to cl clean houses to clean up a scene, that sort of thing. Good thing Essay's sister is going to say she was with me, all those sorts of things, which suggests that it was Taylor or the speaker who did it. A lot of people have linked that to Harry Styles again. I don't know where that came from personally. Something to do with a, a, a murder that they committed, but I, that seems a little bit extortionate um, for me. I also don't think really that the murder mystery is a core thing with her, like possibly it wasn't, it was tenuously linked to Marjorie West, I like to believe that it was fully linked to it, but sadly maybe not because she hasn't mentioned it, I don't know. That is all I've got for this album, I am living for her new era and it will be interesting to see what happens next. Hopefully this has been a enjoyable video, I know I've rambled on a little bit and I haven't really said much about a lot of the songs, but 
again I don't listen to the whole album I listen to Nobody No Crime I listen to Evermore, Evermore all the time I listen to Tis a Dime Season and Dorothea so the top four I listen to a lot the rest of them I don't really listen to because I get bored halfway through and that happens to me with a lot of music anyway it's not Taylor's it's not anything to do with Taylor's music, it's to do with music in general. I just get bored halfway through songs, low attention span. Uh, have a good Christmas, because there'll definitely not be one another one before Christmas. And Happy New Year. <laughs>